be going into properties of limits. So I'm going to define L, M, C, and K. So the limit as X goes to some X value C of F of X is equal to the limit L. The limit as X goes to some X value C of F of X is, that should be G of X, sorry, that's a typo. G of X is M. So now the first um, property or law is called the sum law. And the, what it is is the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, which means if you have them added up together and they're going to the same x value, but you only know them separate, this is a property. It's kind of like knowing the laws of logarithms, that you can only do so many things with it. With this, you can actually just say, well, this is equal to the limit L plus the limit M, whatever that may be. Okay? Difference law. So, of course, the only way you can do this is if the limit is de defined, right? You can't add these things up if it's not. We're going to see some of those coming up, and I'll show you what to do then. So these properties only pertain to ones that you actually can calculate the limits for. So the limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. So again, if you have two functions that are subtracting, you can separate them, and then this would just be L minus M. So pretty straightforward. Um, constant multiple. The limit of a constant times a function is a constant times the limit of the function. Meaning, if I only know what the limit as x goes to some value a c of f of x, the k can be written outside of it. I'm just going to write it like that so you can see what I'm doing. So it's really the k times the limit as x goes to c of f of x, which means then it's k times l, right? Because l was the limit. The product law, the limit of the product is the product of the limits. So again, if I know them separately, this law says I can actually just, you know, separate them and find the limit separately. So this L times M. And last, oh, not last, yeah, second last, is quotient. So the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limit. Provided that the limit of the denominator is not zero, because you can't divide by zero, right? So that means this would be L divided by M. Of course, M can't be zero. So what happens if M is zero? Undefined. So uh, we'll keep going. And then the power law is if we use the product law repeatedly, the limit of a rational power is the power of the limit, meaning this is you can take this power out. I'm just going to write it out so it makes more sense. So the limit as f of x we know is L, but this is to the power r over s. That means my limit is going to be to the power r over s. So just, again, some laws and properties, because you're going to be answering some questions based on that. OK. Oh, sorry. We're going to do this. So here's the first example. Given that the limit as x goes to 2 of h of x is 5, and the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x is 0, find the following limit. So because um, we are given this information, that means the limit exists for both of them, right? Because remember these laws, we can only use if the limit exists. So because the limit exists, we can actually just 5 plus 0. Oh, it is actually 0 plus 5. Maybe I'll write it in that order. <laughs> 0 plus 5. It's okay if you do it the other way. That's, that's fine. Okay, so this is the, um, the constant multiple. So again, we only know what h of x is, but the 3 doesn't matter. We take the 3 out, and then it's... I'm just going to write it out. You don't have to, but I'm just showing what this actually is. The limit as x goes to 2 of h of x, which means it's 3 times whatever that limit is. So that means it's... 3 times 5, which is 15. Okay? Same with the product. The limit as x goes to 2, you can do them separately. Again, I'm going to write it out, but you don't have to. So this is the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x. This would probably be in a multiple choice or something, right? So it's just right or wrong. But I'm just showing my work. So then that would be... 0 times 5, which then gives me 0. Yes? Okay, so the next one, 
is, it's going to be undefined. So it's 5 divided by 0, which is undefined. Right? Not the limit doesn't exist, it's undefined. Okay, so now we're going to get into some complicated limits here. So in the past, probably the assignment you've already done, you can pretty much read them and see what the limits are, depending on what it is. Now we're going to combine them. So these are what's called, this is actually new this year, this is why I'm re-recording this. So it's, it's called advanced limits. This is when we have composite operations with it, so, or just some operations with some um, non-traditional type things. So do you remember seeing this in grade 12, f of g of x? So you find g of x first, whatever that is, you plug it into f. Okay, so it's a little bit different with, with the whole limits and stuff like that. So they're saying that you can actually do this. You find the limit of g of x first, whatever that height is, then you're just finding f of that height. It's pretty simple. But this only works if there's an actual limit and it's continuous at f of that. Okay? So if any of that is not true, we have to kind of um, do it a little bit differently. So if f is not continuous at the limit, or the limit of g of x doesn't exist, then we can't apply this property. We can't just do it directly. Okay? I, I draw it without lifting my pencil. So when you have those piecewise functions where they don't meet, meet up, that, that would be not continuous, right? No, so then I'm, that's why I'm going to show you what to do after this. Okay, so it doesn't tell us anything conclusive about the existence. However, um, again, the standard li we're going similar discussions happen when you when you don't have limits. You're going to have to take them apart here. So essentially, um, f of x equals the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l. Blah blah blah. You add them, you get l plus m. We already said this. But you can't do this if a the limit doesn't exist or it's not continuous. If it's not continuous, the limit's probably not going to exist anyways. So same with if you um, if it doesn't exist, we cannot draw any. We can't use the limit laws essentially. So you got to do something a little different. So what you have to do, and this is the first time you've seen an if and only if statement. This IFF, this means if and only if. So what happens when you come into this scenario is you have to actually do the limit from the left, calculate it, do the limits from the right, calculate it, and then if they match, then that's the answer. If they don't match, then the limit doesn't exist. Okay? So IFF means if and only if. So if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, then you can conclude this composite or all the things that you're doing that that's actually the limit. Okay? So... Here we go. So here's a graph of f of x and g of x, okay? Um, I think, yes, I think these are arrows after it, yeah. So if you don't have arrows there, just draw the arrows there. Okay, so first off, we'll look at, does everybody see the limit laws say as a composite function that you can find the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x, and then whatever that is, find f of it. But only if... Um, only if uh, the limit exists. So g of x, this is our g of x, at 1, does the limit exist? Yes, it's what? 0. And then when you go to the f of 0 part, can you figure it out? Yeah. Pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to write this out. So this is f of the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x. So this is f of 0, which is 2. Okay, did I lose anybody there? That's that's a straightforward limit, kind of like the straightforward ones of adding and subtracting and stuff like that. Okay, so traditional rules apply. Now, let's go to the next one. So you normally you can just separate them and then multiply together. So let's see what happens when we separate them. The limit as x goes to 2 of f of x. Uh-oh, look at this. Yeah, well, the, the limit doesn't exist, so we can't, yes. And then g of x at 2 is, it actually is 1. So that one exists, but f of x doesn't. So you, do, you don't go, oh, well, because um, that one doesn't exist. Remember in grade uh, 12, um, you couldn't add parts of the graphs together that didn't exist, right? You just started where you, 
So, but limits are a little different. What you have to do now is you basically um, narrow it down to the left and the right and see if you can figure it out. So I'm going to do the limit as x goes to 2 from the right-hand side of f of x times the limit as x goes to 2 from the right-hand side of g of x and see what we get. So the limit that x goes to 2 of f of x from the right-hand side is 1. So what I'm doing right now is I'm separating, the next, the next sentence what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, the limit as x goes to 2 from the left. I'm separating them because I can't do it as an entire unit uh, limit right now because I didn't know what the limit was. Oh, because I'm coming from the right. I am coming from the right of 2 so that I know it's clearly going to 1. Right? The intended height is clearly 1. Okay, so now I'm going to go from the right of g of x. g of x, I'm going to 1. There's one. Oh, sorry, I'm going to 2 from the right-hand side, so I'm coming this way. So what's the intended height? 1. So this is 1 times 1, and I get 1. Okay? So now this full answer will equal 1 if the left-hand side is the same thing. So now I'm going to do the left hand of f of x times the left hand of g of x. So the left hand of f of x is 0. It's not going to be the same thing. I don't even have to do anything here. But it's 1 here. It's still good practice. So it's 0 because these don't match. Now I can conclude that the, the composite, or actually not a composite, it's this, um, this limit does not exist. So does not exist. Yeah, so the limit doesn't exist because these don't match. So some of you, um, okay, this one, this one's f of f of x as x goes to 0. So if you look at the function as x goes to 0, clearly it's 2, right? But then you have to find f of 2 and you don't know which one it is, right? Okay, so what we have to do here is we need to come from the left and the right. So the left and the right. The limit as x goes to 0 of um, f of x. And we're going to come from the right on this one. And then we have to find f of that, right? So let's, should I wait a second? Okay, I'll wait. What is the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x fr from the right? From the right, it's 2. But remember, limit, now we're going to, what? so this is why they say um, explore the left-hand limits. So I'm going to put a 2, and then I'm going to put a little minus by it, meaning it's 2 coming from the bottom. It's less than 2. The limit actually coming from the right, right is, is actually just below 2. It's, remember, it's the intended height, right? So I'm going to write this like this. So then what I'm doing is I'm actually finding f of 2 from the left. Then it's clear what the answer is. What's the... Oh, the so this is, sorry, this is... Gonna, I think I want to write, I, I know you're going to get mad. I'm going to just rewrite it a certain way. I think I want to do it in two limits like this. Watch this, watch this. Look at the beginning, stop. Look at the beginning here when I did the composite functions. Um, so, so we're actually doing it separately like that. So watch, I'm going to say let u equal the limit, it's up to you if you want to erase it, from 0 from the right of f of x. Does everybody see this is 2 from the left? Now I'm going to find the limit, I just made it up, I just made it up, because you can't call it x again or whatever, okay? So now I'm going to go the limit as u goes from 2 from the left of f of u. Then it makes more sense what I'm doing here because before you're kind of saying, well, why, why isn't it actually the defined value? But now because we're coming from, this answer is actually less than 2. It's not really 2. It's less than 2. Now I'm coming from the limit 
as x goes from 2 from the left. This is where it gets a little complicated. So 2 from the left would be? 2 from the left would be 0. So I get 0 here. 0. OK, so now we're going to go let u, or we can do v if you want, just to have a different variable. v is the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x. So what does that equal? 2 from the, like, so, so t less than 2, right? When, yeah. when I'm coming here, it's going to be less than 2. Why is it less? Because this is a limit. So, so, so we want to know if it's coming from the, we're trying to look at the behavior. We're looking at it coming from the left? We're coming from the left to 0. So it's clearly below 2 there, right? So then this is 2 minus. That's why I'm saying 2 minus. Coming, like, from this way, like from above, that means take 2 plus? Yeah. You'll see that in a second. Oh, yeah. This is, this is a little new, that, like I said this year. So then this is f of v. So now we're coming, the limit is coming from 2 from the left of f of v. So it's the same function, but it's the same. No, it's still coming from the left. Because it's coming from the left for 0. This is from the left of 2. Now it's still coming from the left of 2. This is still 0. So that means, therefore, this equals 0 is my answer. Oh, 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 oh so like the first one is like... What they, they match, right? Yeah. So if they both match, then that means that limit exists and it's at 0. It takes a few to get it, like for sure. This is a little bit more... You have to really understand what you're looking for. Okay, here's another one. X goes to negative 1 of f of x plus g of x. So f of x at 1, at, sorry, negative 1. Do you see? I don't know what the limit is. Do you see? Right away, I can't use them separate, right? I'm going to have to actually now go into the two-sided limit. So now I'm going to do the limit as x goes to negative 1. Let's do from the right-hand side of f of x plus g of x. Sorry if I didn't give you enough room. So coming from the right, sorry, from the right, it is, what's the limit as x goes to negative, negative 2. Everybody agree it's negative 2? From the right. Now I'm coming from the right on g of x. What is that? Here, towards, yeah, so plus negative 1, so I get negative 3 as my answer. Are we good? Okay, so now I'm going to come from the left. So the limit as x goes to negative 1 from the left of f of x plus g of x equals, or I don't know if I need an equal sign there. Um, so negative 1 from the left. What's that one? Negative 1 plus, now I'm coming from the left here, negative 2. So what do we get? Negative 3, so therefore the answer is negative 3. Does that make sense now? The addition ones are nicer than the composite ones for sure. Okay, let's try this one. Do you want to try this one on your own? It's a little... Okay, well, when f of x goes to 1, um, you, the limit exists, right? It's just 2, so that's fine. Good so far. G of x plus 1 means 1 plus 1, which is g of, the limit as g is goes to 2. So you don't know what the limit is. Yeah, so you're finding the limit as x, g goes to 2. So it's this right here. So we don't know. So we got to separate them into two-sided limits now, okay? Does everybody understand that? Wait, so is that like technically for g of x, limit of x goes to 2? Yes. Okay, so the limit... As x goes to 1 from the right of f of x plus g of x plus 1. Okay, so we're coming from the right, f of x. What is it? Yeah, it's 2. And then g of 2. So now we're going to 2, right? So what is it? From the right. It would be 3. It is 3. We'll say 3. Is five? No, it's right. Okay, so now we're going to do from the left. Consider 
already? Okay, I'm going to do the, the left-hand side. So f of x plus g of x plus 1. So this is 1 from the left of f of x is still 2, yes? And then going to 2 from the left is 2. So 2 plus 2 is? 4. four. So that means, yeah, d and e. Where? Oh, I did. Shoot. Okay. Error code. Error code. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, the limit as x goes to 2, clearly we're going to have to break it apart, right? Okay. So, the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. Actually, I'm going to make that be u, right? When you have the composite functions, it's easier to say it this way. So, the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. I don't know, u and v, because it's not close to... I could use a, it doesn't matter. No, because you already have... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so of uh, g of x. So coming from the right of g of x, of 2, what is it? 3. It is 3. Very good. But it's 3, it's 3 what? 3 what? 3, it's... 3 negative. 3 negative, right? 3 negative. 3 with a negative. And then it's going to be the limit as u goes to 3 minus of g of u. But it's not going to matter because it's coming from 3 from the, from the left-hand side. It's still... Yeah. So what is it? What do you mean? From three? But it, it's coming oh, from the I'm left. Uh, it's going it's clearly going to go to zero, right? Yeah. It's zero, yeah. So zero. And then I'll do V equals the limit as X goes to two from the left of G of X. What is that? It's coming from the two. So now it's it's two. But it's 2 minus, yeah. So then it's going to be the limit Wait, as that? v goes to 2 minus of g of v. So then what's that going to be? Okay, sorry. So you got 2 and you got 0. They don't match, so... D and E again. All right. 